2020 has definitely been a year where video games have helped a ton in many aspects, especially as a distraction while self-isolating. Despite me playing a lot of new games this year, these five games I'll be talking about have truly resonated with me the most. By the way, I won't be limiting my choices by release year, the only real criteria that I have is that I have to have played the game for the first time during 2020. So let's get into it. These are my favorite games of 2020. First off, Dragon Ball Fighters is something I never saw myself ever enjoying. Considering that I was never into fighting games as much, which was mostly due to my lack of patience. I was also heavily into Smash Bros, and plus I did not understand the fighting game characters that are in that game, so you can imagine how that was. And I didn't want to change either, so when I bought DBFZ, I didn't even know much about Dragon Ball as a franchise. Yeah, I knew about Goku, Vegeta, Frieza, etc, but those were the only characters I knew about, so it was mostly a gamble for me when I bought the game. The gamble was insanely worth it though, in the end. As you can see from my channel, I made a lot of DBSV videos already, and I've been playing a lot of other fighting games as well during quarantine. It's hard to put into words why this game was such a perfect introduction to the world of fighting games in my experience. The accessibility is through the roof, the visuals are an absolute joy to witness, and there's so many references and little nods to anime and manga. The thing is, is that this game made me a Dragon Ball fan and it introduced me to an entire series that I'm super passionate about now. Being able to appreciate iconic moments like Goku and Frieza vs Jiren, or Gohan erasing Cell with the father-son Kamehameha all in one game honestly feels like a dream. And it's all stemmed from one, one single thing, which is pretty amazing to me. Before I say anything else, I want to say that this game is an absolute work of art. It's extremely underrated, and if you have not experienced it yet, I heavily recommend it. I'm still a bit salty that I haven't discovered this game before this year either, because it's the type of experience where sometimes it genuinely does not feel like you're playing a video game whatsoever. The music and art of the game create this beautiful harmony that engrossed me into the game's universe and the story it tells. Going through the story via drawings and flashbacks at the end of levels actually made me even more interested in it, because I love the stories where- I love types of stories where it tells you through visuals and subtle motions. Stuff like the Bitrif series, Journey, Abzu, and even more come to mind. And those games helped me love this one even more. The gameplay itself is, ex is extremely basic, but there are a few motions and maneuvers like a dodge roll for example that can make the gameplay faster paced so it also encourages speedrunning at the same time, which is always a great thing in my book. In the drawn world of the game, it's such an amazing thing to see everything move. The square C helps everything feel like it's in a dance, and you are the one to participate in it as well, as you move throughout the world. Well, watching the credits, I was almost tearing up, okay? Like, I can't honestly describe this game without saying the words graceful or beautiful. It's just that powerful of an experience, so... Please, go play Bound if you have not played it, because it's definitely one of those games where it's extremely underrated and people really shoved it under the rug, in a way. So, does this one count as cheating? It's not an individual game, it's a DLC, so eh, whatever, I'll bend the rules a bit. My hype for Remind was at a similar level for that of KH3 when it was released because of the sheer amount of potential, and considering that this game was an equivalent to a Final Mix title, I was even more excited for the new potential bosses and combat options. And we got a ton of that. The lesson lag on moves makes Sora feel so good to use in these battles, and Sora's just ballin' in this DLC. Here, the new moves and finishers also help make up for Magic Flash's existence, and I haven't even mentioned the data battles and Yozora, so let's get into that. The sheer amount of new fights alone is insane, 13 data fights and Yozora being the big ones. The data fights are all the organization fights from the Keyblade Graveyard, but with the amount of new moves and strategies you have to put into practice to survive, 
it makes these entirely new fights. And honestly, I can't justify these fights in such a short amount of time, so I'll be making a separate video talking about their design, because it's amazing how they design new bosses. Overall though, I really like the story of Remind as well. It's unfortunate that you have to do a lot of refights in the Keyblade Graveyard, but at least you get to play as Roxas, so it's extremely worth it. Stuff like the Guardians of Light section and playable Scala are also major highlights, and playing as Kyrie feels like a cherry on top of the cake. Last but not least, with all these raw improvements and additions to DLC provided, it made Kingdom Hearts 3 my favorite game in the series as a whole. Like, actually, now it doesn't feel like putting Remind on here is cheating, because Remind and Cage 3 are two completely different games at this point, and they should be treated like two different entities. Now onto another game that heavily deserves its own video as well, I'll keep this one brief because of that. Persona 5 Royal acted extremely similar to DBFC for me in terms of how much it exposed me to new franchises, both Persona and Shin Megami Tensei. Royal was also extremely fun to experience the first time, because the characters themselves are really entertaining to me. Well, besides, um, some specific moments. It was a wonderful story, and the dungeons flow insanely well into the story itself, which is really great. Talking about the palaces themselves, my favorite one that isn't the last one because spoilers are either Kamoshidas or Futabas. I might have Futabas as my favorite though because its theme is godlike, but still. Despite their generally linear design, I really enjoy the palaces, and the will seeds really help too because they help encourage you to explore way more. And there are a ton of other things that I want to discuss in regards to this game, but I don't want to give them away yet until I make my review video for the game for it, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so I fully did not expect this game to even get remotely close to becoming my game of the year. I didn't have nearly as much hype for the game initially as something like Case 3 Remind, and there were just so many factors against it. Yet this game honestly felt like the perfect game for quarantine. I've made a full-on review of it already, but after writing it, I realized its status as being such a substantial quarantine game. One of the first things that comes to mind is just the pure, unadulterated fun of all the excellenting and just practicing songs. It's so satisfying to learn more and more and continually improve on each track. Yeah, taking your time and getting better at each track, especially with performer mode, is amazing on its own, but the online mode especially is even more replayable in my opinion. The online battles are extremely entertaining, and with tricks, they become way more chaotic. If you know the track really well, the chaos created from tricks don't affect you whatsoever, even if foes are just purely invisible. This means the mode itself, tricks or not, is determined only by your own skill, and that's what I'm all for. Like I said in my review, when a match comes down to just a few rainbow excellence, it's amazing. That's when it's at its best, and it feels so satisfying have that legitimate duel with another person. Plus, that practice that you did earlier comes through and it feels so good to really put that into a situation where you don't really have that safety net of just resetting it anymore. You gotta actually focus and put it into practice. It makes the wins you get in the online mode feel way better, and that's powerful. Anyway, those are my favorite games of 2020. This is the first time I've ever done this type of video, but next December, I definitely want to see what becomes my next set of favorites by the end of 2021. These games really helped make 2020 way more bearable, and I don't need to explain the crappy stuff that happened in that year, but in the end, I'm really thankful for the great experiences that I got to play. Either way, outros are hard to make. Stay safe guys, and have a great 2021. See you guys in the next video.